Hi there, I'm Gary. Join me while I build this BF109 from Airfix. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Indeed today I'm building the Messerschmitt BF109 from Airfix. I'll be making it with what comes in the box. This is a starter set, so it comes with paints, a paintbrush and some glue. I will be using just a handful of other things as well to make this kit. For pretty much every build I use side snips to take parts off the frames, a craft knife to help clean them up, tweezers for handling the smaller parts, sanding sticks, I make my own but you can use things like emery boards, nail files as well, some clamps or again you can use just regular clothes pegs if you want and some masking tape and if you're using regular masking tape make sure it's a low tack variety for delicate surfaces. Now if you enjoy the show and I really hope you do please remember thumbs up on the button down there and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel Hit that bell and you'll be notified of more videos as they arrive. Now enough of all of that, let's get on and make this Messerschmitt BF109. This kit depicts the BF109E, the type used during the Battle of Britain in 1940. As a starter set, the box includes glue, paint and a paintbrush. It is rated at skill level 1, although there are many very small parts. And it comes with one flying hour. Now you can collect these as a member of the Airfix Club towards a free kit in the future, or you can donate them to Models for Heroes. A link to this charity is in the information box below. Anyway, let's have a look at what we get in the box. The box opens up at one end and I can pour all of the contents out. There are a few bits and pieces to show you. First of these is this plastic bag containing all the parts for the kit. There are two sprues of grey plastic for the bulk of the aircraft and a smaller bag containing the clear parts such as the canopy. Some of these parts are really tiny and delicate. You'll need a sharp craft knife to get some of these off the sprue. Just take your time and be careful. Anyway, there's also another small bag and this one contains a tube of polystyrene cement and four pots of paint, a pale blue, two sort of grey greens and a black. We also have a small sheet of decals. Now these are a basic set as this is a starter kit, but they're still printed very sharply and with great colour. There is a Humbrol number no. 2 general purpose paintbrush and then the instruction sheet. This is well drawn and clear with just two pages needed to complete the kit build. You'll notice there are options here such as having the flaps deployed or attracted and having the canopy open or closed. And finally on the box itself is a painting guide which also shows you where all the decals will go later. Enough of all that, let's get on with the build. I'm starting by pre-painting some of the parts so I need to make sure the paint has been stirred properly. A toothpick or a cocktail stick will do the job. Oh, by the way, all these paints are acrylics, so you can clean out your brush in plain water. When you're painting, don't use too much paint all at once and keep brushing it to spread it out. The acrylic paint just has to get a hold onto the surface. Smaller parts, such as the joystick, are painted on the sprue. To take parts off the sprue, use some edge cutters or a craft knife. You might also remove bits of the sprue to give you a bit more room to work. Other pieces, such as this cockpit tub, can be held on a bit of wood with some blue tack. It makes it easier then to place things like the seat and the rudder pedals. Um, by the way, if you are including the pilot, you need to cut the rudder pedals off so that the pilot sits correctly. The next bit in is the joystick and I'll touch up all the paint once the glue has dried. Ever onward and the next thing is the instrument panel. There are decals to give some details to this. Cut the decal out of the main sheet and soak it in water. I use an old saucer for this. Once the decal has released, 
I pick it up on the backing paper with tweezers, then use a brush to coax it into place. Next I'm taking the fusage halves off the sprue with my cutters. Now, you might find that there are still little bits of excess plastic left over where you make the cut, so just sand these down. I use homemade sanding sticks, but you could use something like a nail file. With the interior paint dry, I'm going to add a few bits of black here and there for some of the equipment boxes. I'm also then going to use a very dilute wash of black paint to bring out some of the moulding here. Be as bold as you like. The same technique will be used on the fuselage later on. Once the instrument decals have dried, the completed panel can go in its place on the cockpit's hub. Now don't worry too much about setting the angle just yet, because the next thing to do is put the cockpit tub into one half of the fuselage. With the tub in place, you can make sure the instrument panel sits at the correct angle. The other half of the fuselage can then be attached. I will say I found this a very precise and clean fit on my copy of the model. While that dries up, you can get on with other things, such as pre-painting the propeller. Again, long repeated strokes of the brush will help the paint adhere but don't be afraid to use more than one coat. One ridiculously tiny piece is the gun sight from the transparency sprue. It slots into a hole at the top of the instrument panel. I'll paint most of it black in a minute. In the meantime, I'll start on the engine surround and the first parts to go together are the bottom panel and the inlet for the oil cooler. These slot into place on the bottom of the nose section. Next is the air inlet on the left side of the nose. This is a tight fit, but it does go on. And finally, the top cover of the engine bay, all fitting very, very snugly. And now that pesky gun sight has set, I'll paint the sides black. Now at the rear of the fuselage, I'm going to slot the rudder into place. Then either side of this are the two tailplanes or horizontal stabilizers. Now they slot into place very well. Each of them has a bracing strut. I found it easiest to fit the strut onto the fuselage first, then align the other end with the hole in the tailplane. When the strut drops into place, you can gently push the tailplane down into the correct position. With the fuselage setting up, I can move on to the wings. Now there are two top halves that sit on a single span, full lower half. Again, these clip very snugly into place, but I'll still clamp or tape them up to dry. And when they're ready, the wing sits into the bottom of the fuselage. Next I'm going to fit the radiators to the underside of the wings. These sit very cleanly in the grooves provided. Then onto the flaps. Now I'm having the flaps deployed or down and these tabs here help set the angle. If you want the flaps retracted or up, just remove the tabs before fitting. Otherwise they slot cleanly into place. I'm putting on the canopy next. Now you need to use as little glue as possible here. So to prevent loads of it coming out the tube, I use a paper clip to carry small amounts onto the model. You can just dab a spot or two here and there to hold the windscreen and the other parts. Alternatively, use a PVA type white glue. Now all of this is to prevent chemical hazing of the clear parts. These tabs on the side are for the open cockpit. For a closed cockpit, just cut them off. With everything set up, I'll turn to painting. Again, don't apply too much at once and use repeated long strokes to help the paint stick. Don't be afraid of using more than one coat. There's more than enough paint, even in the little pots supplied. The gray green is ideal for the undercarriage bays and they're easy to paint at this time. Now the foresty green paint supplied is not very dense and it's difficult to get to coat well. So what I do is paint all of the upper surfaces in the greyer colour, then apply the green to selected areas. 
It will still need more than one coat to get rid of brush marks, but it will save a lot of time. Now, the number two brush that's supplied is a bit heavy for painting canopy frames, so if you have any overspill, you can gently rub it away using a very sharp cocktail stick. This is one of the advantages of using acrylic paints. The next thing I'm doing is adding the undercarriage legs. The holes for these are well made and the legs sit at the correct angles very simply. And while they're drying, I'll paint some more bits such as the tyres. With the overall paint dried, I'm applying the decals, again using tweezers to hold the support paper and the brush to coax decals into place. Now let these decals dry well before doing anything else, I'd say half an hour at the least. Onward again and the exhausts now go into the fuselage. I've pre-painted them black. Then the wheels can go onto the legs. They have oval shaped holes so that the flat spot of the weighted tyre sits in the right place at the bottom. Then the gear doors go on the gear legs do pay attention to the part numbers here to make sure you get the right door on the right leg. Some really fiddly stuff here. Now I'm going to use tweezers to attach these mass balance horns to the underside of the ailerons. They're really, really fiddly. And here is the pitot tube. I'm having to use a craft knife to take this off as my cutters would be way too big here. The pitot sits under the wing. Now look carefully at the instructions to see where the hole is, as it is under a decal. Next the propeller sits in its base and the prop boss goes on top. Then the whole assembly can go on the front of the engine. A few last pieces now. There are two machine gun barrels to fit, one into each wing. Then the very last bit is the radio aerial. A quick go round touching up the paintwork and then I'll add a bit of that dilute black wash to some of the panel lines. The kit is then complete. I think this BF109E is a lovely kit to build. I found the fit and finish of all the parts to be very good, the paints are decent and the decals nice and sharp. The finer detail parts aren't suitable perhaps for the youngest modellers as they're tricky to get off the sprue and even easier to lose, but for anyone with patience and basic tools you can get a really good result with ease. If you've enjoyed watching please remember thumbs up on the button down there and of course subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified of all the new videos as they turn up on the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.